Today we're going to multiply decimals by whole numbers using the standard algorithm. And standard algorithm is basically just a fancy word for the normal way that you multiply, the standard way. Um, yesterday we used models, and I'm going to show you how those models are going to um, transfer to regular multiplication. So for example, one of the problems we did yesterday was 14 hundredths, and you can put a zero there or not put a zero there, and it's still the same thing. So let's get rid of that zero, because it's going to be extra work for us. Uh, and we multiplied it by 5. So now when you're adding and subtracting decimals, you have to line up your decimals. However, when you are multiplying decimals, you do not have to line up the decimals. Very important distinction to know. Because you're going to basically ignore the decimal until you get your answer. So you don't have to line up the decimals. So you do not have to do 14, I'm sorry, you do not have to do 14 hundredths times 5 and then fill those in with zeros like you would if you were adding, okay? So you don't have to do that. You can just kind of line them up like you would a regular multiplication problem and you're going to ignore that decimal to the end. So if you're ignoring that decimal until the end, then all you're going to do is multiply. So you're going to do 5 times 4, okay? So 5 times 4 is 20. Put down the 0, carry the 2. Then you do 5 times 1, which is 5, plus 2, which is 7. So you have 70, but remember yesterday when we made this model, we said, well, it's not 70 holes because we're multiplying by 14 hundredths, not 14 holes. So the answer's got to be 70 hundredths, okay? So here's kind of the technical way that you figure that out. You look, and you have your answer, and you look up here, and you say, gee, in this whole problem, if I find the decimal, there are two numbers after the decimal. So what I do is I go down to my answer, and I move the decimal two places into my answer from the end, and I'm going to get 70 hundredths, okay? It might seem like you're bringing the decimal straight down, but it's not exactly what you're doing. You have a hundredths place here, so you're making a hundredths place here. You have two places after the decimal here, so you move your decimal in two places from the end, okay? And so if you were to write that up here, you would have 70 hundredths, okay? Now let's try a number that's getting a little bit bigger. All right, let's go with something with like 37 hundredths times 6. So we're going to have 6 groups of 37 hundredths, okay? So again, so we're going to ignore our decimal until we finish the problem, all right? So we've got 6 times 7 is 42, okay? Put down the 2, care of the 4. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 4 is 22, okay? So we've got our answer. So now that we have our answer, we look at the problem, we say, hey, I have two numbers after the decimal in this problem. So I need to take a, I need to move in one, two places from the end of the answer and put a decimal. So my answer, and let me darken that up so you guys can see it better. So my answer is going to be two on this side of the decimal, a two and a two on that side of the decimal. So I would read it, 2 and 22 hundredths, okay? 2 and 22 hundredths. The other way you could read it is you could read it as 222 hundredths, but that's another story maybe for another day, okay? So you have 2 and 22 hundredths, which makes sense because you're multiplying hundredths, so there's hundredths place here, so then there's a hundredths place in your answer, all right? Um, and that is pretty much it. So the thing is, is you're just going to multiply like normal, but you're going to pay attention to the decimal. So if it was an even larger number, so let's say we're doing like a two-digit number, um, or like let's say we have a number like this, 3 and 24 hundredths times 15. Okay, we can totally do that. So again, you just multiply like normal, 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12, put down 2, carry the 1. 5 times 3 is 15, plus the 1 is 16. Okay, so we did that, did that, did that. Now I have to multiply, oh, that makes it look like an 8. Let me get rid of that. Now I have to multiply 1 times everything. Before I do that, remember, I have to put a 0 because my answer needs to start in the tens place because the 1 is in the tens place. So I have to put that magic 0. Then I can multiply 1 times everything. So 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 3 is 3. Now I add them together. 
okay? Now I'm not done because there is a decimal. So remember, I got to do something. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to say, okay, there's one, two places after the decimal in the problem. So I'm going to come down here to my answer and I'm going to move the decimal in two places and it's going to go between the eight and the six. So my answer is going to be 48 and 60 hundredths. All right.